Hi, and welcome to the very first set of resources for data analysis track in the ongoing 30 days of learning. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through the world of analytics, focusing on how fast the world is changing through data so that you can fit in and understand how the skill you are building is relevant in this age and the involving workplace. So it's so interesting that I can give my quote today. In 2019, out of a lot of thinking about the world, the data, where I fit in, then I came up with this quote. Data is the new oil. And I live in an oil country where nobody is drilling. That's the situation in Nigeria and most African countries. Data is being generated at a higher rate, but how much of insight is being taken or derived from this data? To truly mine data, you need to have the skill and that skill is not common today so let's take it off from here what are the global opportunities that are available first let's see the data gap the data gap look like a challenge but today i'm telling you that is an opportunity as a 2021 estimated data that the world has produced that has generated in 2021 is 74 zettabyte of data generated that's huge if you look at different scale storage scale of measurement and from this there's an estimate that the world you know analyzed less than 30 percent of this data making it 22 utabyte, um, zettabyte this leaves us with 52 zettabyte data gap meaning 52 zettabyte, zettabyte over 70 percent of data today are yet to be analyzed and derived insight the reason for this might be due to many other things. It could be because the skills are not available, it could be because um, the data are not in the form tool, which makes it easier to you know, to analyze. And these are the things that comes together. But let's solve them one after the other. In the second wave of data transformation, these are the things that you should watch out for. You know, we have more issues around health. You can see many health analytics, but you need the skill first. Uh, you can be in head and solve much problems. You need a skill. Once you have the skill, you can apply it to solve problems in the head sector, you know, automation because a lot of manner challenges that are happening today. Risk, a lot of risk how the more analytics can help to avoid or better manage risk and personal analytics. You are not much more important, you know, careful about your health, how many steps you take per day, you know, things that relate to your lifestyle, you know, the analysis of your credit card transactions or debit card transactions and the rest. Now, let's narrow this back to the skill. Why is it so difficult to cover this skill gap? And I'm going to mention some things evolving wrong. A lot of rules are evolving. You know, 2015 or 5, 10 years ago, many job titles and roles we have today doesn't exist simply because the tools are not yet matured that the field have not yet matured like they had today. So some people might carry the title or do work that relates to the title in the several years ago, but in formality, they've not been form it's not been formally known as a title or field. Then we have multidiscipline because most of these roles in data, you need to have more, you need to be multidisciplined. So you have knowledge of data analysis, you have knowledge of statistics, knowledge of you know mathematics algorithm, knowledge of computer programming for some of them before you can do that. So and this is against the curriculum, you know, how we were taught in universities. Uh, you just realize that no course combines these skills and knowledge together. We also have skill gap. You know, the real skill gap you said is people do not have the skill that takes to analyze this data, to actually analyze them. And use case gap. You know, a lot of people do not even know what kind of things can I do when I have data like this. So because they are not aware of this use case gap, uh, they are not aware of those use cases, possible use cases, it creates a gap as well. So data is their line follow, but I wonder what can I do with it? Because they don't know what they can do with it. Let's further share with you the opportunities in this. According to Microsoft, from the data call from LinkedIn, between 2020 and 2025, there's going to be 149 million new jobs in data space. And you can see as I narrow down on the, in, the, in this slide, 20 million plus 23 million, 43 million of these jobs will be around data analysis, machine learning and AI, cloud and data rules. Do you see opportunities? Yes. If you can have the skill, nobody will give you the job because of you've graduated from school and studied data analysis or whatever the, the title of your discipline. It is, do you have the skill? So you are building a very relevant skill right now. It is 
the right, a little step in the right direction. So, what are the different data roles as we continue to analyze the evolving world of you know analytics? I mentioned that these roles are evolving and they were different things. So let me explain to you as a student. Data in itself goes through different processes and stages. And so there are many roles that you find across these processes. Number one, before a data is being captured, you don't just capture data. Before data is being captured, what are the roles? What are the activities that takes place there? Then you see them here, data engineers. Data engineers are the ones who focus on building pipelines. So they figure out how to gather and organize data. They're the one, you know, what are the schemas to use everything and they create the pipeline so that when data drops there, it should go through this transformation, it should step here, those process, they put it in place. Before data is captured, they should do the work, not when data has been captured. Before data is been captured. You know, data architects, they are responsible for planning and architecture. Planning the architecture rather, or even framework, which the data to be collected will be processed and stored. So they know the services that must be connected together. They know how this new structure you are building connects to existing data sources and the rest. Oh, this is the best approach to use. Then data engineer can implement them. The fact that one comes before the other does not mean they come maybe one supersede the other. They work together. All the activities is still within the pre-data capture stage before data is being captured. So, okay, now that we have the pipelines, we have the structure, infrastructure, everything in place, you know data can easily flow in now. So, at the point of data being captured, we have roles like data owners and stewards. Data owners are people who are responsible for a particular data domain in the business. So um, if you are in customer, you know, sector for an e-commerce now, we can have the, the purchase products data owners. We can have customer data owners. So customer data owner is responsible for every information that relates to the data. He is not the one directly doing it, but he has people in charge and is responsible for the data quality and many other, you know, um, policies around the data. Data still will support data owners and business in making sure that they have the best possible data in terms of quality and other dimensions of interest. So you see different rules, all still about this data. Before data is being captured, when data is being captured, and after data has been captured. So what happened after data has been captured? Then you can see rules like data analysis. I call these people explorers. You know, they clean and transform data in quest for insight. As a matter of fact, many organizations do not have data engineer. They just have a system and maybe not a resident data architect, maybe just a system that has just been built for them, and that is all. So data analyst is the one who then start doing some other transformative work, you know, in quest for insight. And I call them explorer because there's really no immediate, um, there's really no, this is, yeah, just plug this and play. No, they continue to explore. For every business question, there's no straight answer. It is when you explore the data that you'll be able to find out this answer. Then also have business intelligence analysts. These roles are interchangeable in many organizations. If you're a data analyst in some organization, what you do is you collect survey data, you analyze those survey data, and the way you report those kind of things is different. For NGO, as a measurement and evaluation officer, you do those kind of work. Survey, you work mostly with survey data, analyze them. For, for a business intelligence analyst, yes, you make use of data as input in driving conversation because you're engaging business with insight and Today, just take it. That is why I made both of them together because your roles is just both. As a data analyst today, you should be able to explore data, bring out insight, and not just do that, also engage the business. Interpret visualization output and communicate the outcome to the business. Make recommendation. So take it, data analyst, but different companies might be given different titles and say, oh, your role is here, your role is not here. But these are the things we'll also be teaching you in this course. You will be able to Play your role as a data analyst that can do work of just street analyst or business intelligence analyst. We also have data scientists. So what this guy does is uh, they apply statistical techniques to differentiate between signal and noise. They build solutions that predict what will happen next. So data analysts and business intelligence analysts just do what has happened. They report on what has happened and dive deep sometimes to understand why it happened. But data scientist is after what will happen next. You want to predict which customer will leave you. You want to predict what product a customer is likely to buy. You want to predict, you know, um, um, how much are we likely to generate in the business. You want to know what will happen next. And that is what data scientist actually focuses on. So for you to know what will happen next, you need to be able to separate noise from, <laughs> from signal. 
and be factual. You know, this is what will happen next, and not just so confused or not so sure. Even though everything is subjected to, you know, likely no model is perfect. Then we have AI machine learning engineers. These are people who actually deploy the solution that data scientists build. As a matter of fact, in today's settings, if you're in Africa, if you're a data scientist, you are likely the one to deploy your solution. So, but that doesn't mean that's how it ought to be always. We have AI and machine learning engineers who focuses on you deploying, you know, leveraging on different frameworks that exist today to deploy their solution. There are many other roles that are evolving around here. We have data management officer who focuses on data governance, data quality management, data, you know, uh, master data, master data management, reference data, and a whole lot of other subtopics that governs through uh, that governs data quality and management. So which are not here, we have analytics engineer, which is also similar to data engineer, but the process is different. Um, data engineer extract, transform, and load. Analytics engineer, extract, load, and transform. And that's a conversation for another day, but it's good to show you that this same data we're talking about that has been generated in high volume all actually has different faces. There's a phase before this data is being generated and there are rules that apply to that. There is one when data is being generated. After the data has been generated, these guys start working with that data to do all these activities. Okay. What are the recommended skill set for data analysts? First, soft skills. Curiosity, critical thinking, communication skill, domain knowledge. You want to work in the HR space, you need to understand that space as well. And after you've done this, you move next to platforms. Um, you know, it, because when you have these soft skills, when you get to your workplace, the next thing you get to know is platforms. Oh, where's our data? Because data is what you are working with. Is it on premise? Is it on cloud? And Azure is one of those you know, cloud service provider, especially that is what we're going to teach you. Everything that relates to cloud will be teaching you using Azure because there are free services to support your learning and talk about tools. You see, as against the way people talk today, it is not tool first. It is these things, and most importantly, business value. In the subsequent videos, you get to know more about business value. All right. So knowledge of things like Excel, Power BI, uh, you know, SQL, Python. Yes, not everybody needs to know Python for data analysis. It's there are use cases, but it depends uh, on the kind of organization you work with and your role. So first, SQL, Power BI, Excel can go a long way. As a matter of fact, Excel, Power BI can go a long way. And we see a lot of people actually doing data analysis work with Excel. Okay. I believe this is setting you on a very good stand as you widen your understanding. Um, no, yeah, we are on the data analysis track, yes. But these are best to start thinking, to understand the opportunities, which are not challenges. They are opportunities for you and what you need to know about data in itself. Back to this. You see, it is no longer a challenge, it is opportunity. What I've said now, you can see 43 million new job opportunities in this space. It's just for you to focus on developing your skill, De definitely the opportunity will come for you. Thank you and bye.